Picture yourself in the cockpit of a sleek, twin-engine aircraft soaring over the icy waters of the Baltic Sea in 1944. The hum of your engines is steady, your eyes scanning the horizon for signs of foreign vessels. You're not just any pilot. You're at the controls of the Saab 18A, Sweden's first homegrown bomber and reconnaissance plane, a machine born from a nation's resolve to stand firm in a world engulfed by war. This aircraft, though lesser known than its American or British counterparts, was a triumph of Swedish ingenuity, designed to protect a neutral nation's sovereignty during World War II. Its story is one of perseverance, innovation, and quiet heroism. And today, we'll uncover every facet of this remarkable machine. Let's set the stage in 1938. Europe is a tinderbox, with tensions rising as nations prepare for conflict. Sweden, nestled between warring powers, is determined to maintain its neutrality. The Swedish Air Force, reliant on foreign aircraft like the German Junkers Aru 86 since 1931, recognizes the need for a modern, domestically produced aircraft. Importing planes is risky, supply chains could be cut off, and Sweden's independence demands self-reliance. So, in 1938, the Air Force launches a competition for a new three-seat fast reconnaissance aircraft, one that can keep pace with the rapidly advancing technology of the era. Three companies step forward, AB Svenska, Jarnvagsverkstadernes, Aeroplan of Delning, or Asya, Svenska Aeroplan AB, known as Saab, and AB Gotteverken, or GV. Each submits a design, but it's a tale of twists and turns before one emerges victorious. The GV-8 from Gotteverken initially seems the front-runner, boasting advanced features that promise to meet the Air Force's demands. But there's a catch. Its cost is steep, and when their chief designer departs, the project falters. Meanwhile, Saab, having merged with ASGAA in March 1939, combines the strengths of both companies. This merger creates a powerhouse capable of tackling ambitious projects, and Saab's design, known as the L-11, wins the contract. The team at Saab includes American engineers, whose influence gives the aircraft a touch of stateside flair. Think of it as a Volvo with a hint of Detroit muscle, blending Swedish precision with American boldness. But the path to the skies is anything but smooth. When World War II erupts in September 1939, Sweden's priorities shift. The Air Force needs dive bombers to counter potential threats. So the Saab 17, a nimble dive bomber, takes precedence. Resources are funneled to its production, leaving the Saab 18 project on the back burner. To add to the challenge, the Air Force revises its requirements, demanding that the new aircraft also serve as a medium bomber. This change complicates the design, requiring a balance between speed for reconnaissance and payload capacity for bombing. It's like asking a sprinter to carry a backpack full of bricks. Doable, but it takes some clever engineering. Despite these hurdles, Saab's engineers press on. By 1942, the first prototype is ready, rolling out of the Linkoping factory. On June 19, 1942, it takes its maiden flight, Powered by two SFA STWC3 engines, Swedish built versions of the Pratt and Whitney R 1830 twin WASP radial engines, each churning out 1,475 horsepower. The prototype performs admirably, but it's not quite ready for the front lines. Refinements are needed to ensure it meets the Air Force's exacting standards. After two years of tweaks and tests, the production version, designated B 18A, enters service in June 1944. It's a three-seat bomber with a crew of a pilot-slash-navigator, a radio operator-slash-gunner, and a bombardier, armed with three 13.2mm Aiken M39A autocannons and capable of carrying 1,000 kilograms of bombs. The B-18As Early days are marred by a serious issue. Landing accidents. The landing gear, while functional, isn't as sturdy as it needs to be leading to a high attrition rate. Imagine trying to land a heavily loaded aircraft on a snowy Swedish runway. Hope the ground crew brought their shovels. This problem prompts a significant upgrade. By the late 1940s, ejection seats are installed for the pilot and navigator gunner, a pioneering move that makes the Saab 18A one of the first aircraft to feature this life-saving technology as standard. The bombardier's position is removed to make room reflecting a shift toward prioritizing crew safety over offensive capacity. Magrant? 
Between 1946 and 1947, all B-18A aircraft are converted to the S-18A reconnaissance version. This transformation involves swapping out bombing equipment for cameras and surveillance gear, aligning with the Swedish Air Force's post-war focus on intelligence gathering. The Cold War is dawning, and Sweden needs eyes in the sky to monitor its neighbors, particularly Soviet activities in the Baltic. The Saab 18A, now a reconnaissance specialist, is ready to take on this new role. Let's dive into the technical details of this remarkable aircraft. The Saab 18A is a twin-engine, all-metal monoplane with a conventional layout. Its fuselage is built using semi-monocoque construction, where the outer skin shares the structural load, providing strength and rigidity, like a steel skeleton wrapped in a tough aluminum hide. The wings, low-mounted with a slight dihedral for stability, span 17.4 meters, or 57 feet 1 inch, making it wider than a modern Boeing 737's wingspan. The aircraft measures 13.23 meters long, 43 feet 5 inches, and stands 4.35 meters tall, or 14 feet 3 inches. Its empty weight is 6,093 kilograms, roughly 13,433 pounds, with a maximum takeoff weight of 8,793 kilograms, or 19,385 pounds. Powering this machine are two SFA STWC3 radial engines, each delivering 1,100 kilowatts or 1,475 horsepower. These engines, built under license in Sweden, drive three bladed VDM 33 propellers, giving the Saab 18AA top speed of approximately 575 kilometers per hour or 357 miles per hour at altitude. That's fast enough to outrun many contemporary fighters, though it's no jet. The aircraft carries 1,700 liters of fuel, 374 imperial gallons, enabling long-range missions critical for reconnaissance. The armament is formidable for its class, 3 13.2mm Akin M39. A autocannons provide defensive and offensive firepower, one fixed forward firing gun in the nose for ground attacks and two movable guns, one in a dorsal position and one in a ventral position, each with 300 rounds. The internal bomb bay can hold up to 1,000 kilograms or 2,200 pounds of ordnance, ranging from high explosive bombs to incendiary devices, depending on the mission. For reconnaissance, the S-18A swaps bombs for cameras, capturing high-resolution images from high altitudes. Until the cockpit is designed for a crew of three. The pilot and navigator share the forward cockpit, with the pilot on the left and the navigator on the right handling navigation and targeting. The radio operator gunner sits in the rear, managing communications and operating the defensive guns. The layout is cramped but functional. Hope the crew packed light for those long missions. By the late 1940s, ejection seats are added for the pilot and navigator gunner, a significant safety upgrade. These seats, powered by gunpowder, allow the crew to escape in emergencies, a feature that sets the Saab 18A apart from many contemporaries. Performance-wise, while exact figures for the B-18A are scarce, later variants like the B-18B offer clues. The B-18B achieves a maximum speed of 590 km per hour or 367 miles per hour, a cruise speed of 550 km per hour or 342 miles per hour, and a range of 2,600 km or 1,616 miles. Its service ceiling reaches 9,800 meters, or 32,152 feet, allowing it to operate above most anti-aircraft threats. The Saab 18A's versatility is a standout feature. It can switch from bomber to reconnaissance platform with minimal modifications, a testament to its clever design. Now let's explore how the Saab 18A performed in the real world. Entering service in June 1944, the B-18A serves as a bomber during the final year of World War II. Sweden, maintaining strict neutrality, uses these aircraft to patrol its borders and deter potential incursions. The B-18A's role is to be ready for action, whether that means bombing enemy positions or gathering intelligence. However, its time as a bomber is brief, as the war's end shifts priorities toward reconnaissance. The high attrition rate from landing accidents is a persistent challenge. The landing gear, 
designed for standard runways, struggles on Sweden's often snow-covered or uneven airstrips. This leads to numerous incidents, prompting the Air Force to prioritize crew safety. The installation of ejection seats in the late 1940s is a game-changer, reducing the risk to pilots and navigators during mishaps. The bombardier's role is phased out, streamlining the crew to two for reconnaissance missions. By 1946, all B-18A aircraft are converted to the S-18A configuration. Equipped with advanced cameras and surveillance gear, the S-18A becomes a vital tool for monitoring Soviet naval activities in the Baltic Sea. In 1945 and 1946, Swedish pilots undertake daring reconnaissance missions, flying close to Soviet airspace to photograph naval vessels. These missions are fraught with danger. Soviet fighters, such as the Yak-9, frequently attempt to intercept the Swedish aircraft. The S-18A's speed and maneuverability allow it to evade these threats, though pilots often rely on sharp flying skills to escape. One pilot, Captain Lars Eriksson, reportedly outmaneuvered a Soviet fighter near Gotland in 1946, diving to low altitude to lose his pursuer in the clouds, a heart-pounding moment that underscores the aircraft's agility. These reconnaissance missions provide critical intelligence to the Swedish military, helping to map Soviet naval movements during the early Cold War. The S-18A's ability to capture high-quality images from high altitudes makes it indispensable, even as tensions rise between East and West. The aircraft's versatility and reliability earn it a reputation among crews as a dependable workhorse, though its landing gear issues remain a running joke. Pilots often quip that landing a Saab 18A is like trying to park a tractor on ice. The Saab 18A remains in service until 1959, when it is gradually replaced by the more advanced Saab 32 Lansen. Over its 15-year career, it serves as a symbol of Sweden's commitment to self-sufficiency in military aviation. The aircraft's ability to adapt to changing roles, from bomber to reconnaissance platform, demonstrates Sweden's foresight in building a flexible air force capable of meeting diverse threats. The legacy of the Saab 18A is profound. It marks the beginning of Saab's journey as a global aerospace leader, laying the groundwork for future successes like the Saab 32 Lansen and the Saab JS-39 Gripen. The experience gained from designing and producing the Saab 18A A shapes Saab's approach to innovation, emphasizing versatility and reliability. Several Saab 18A aircraft are preserved in Swedish museums, such as the Swedish Air Force Museum in Linköping, where they stand as testaments to the nation's aviation heritage. The aircraft also plays a role in advancing aviation technology. Its early adoption of ejection seats influences later designs, and its reconnaissance capabilities pave the way for Sweden's expertise in intelligence-gathering aircraft. Culturally, the Saab 18A is a point of pride for Swedes, symbolizing their ability to stand tall in a world dominated by larger powers. If you visit the Swedish Air Force Museum, you might spot a lovingly restored S-18A. Its sleek lines a reminder of a bygone era though you'll have to imagine the roar of those twin WASP engines. In conclusion, the Saab 18A is more than just an aircraft. It's a testament to Sweden's resolve to protect its independence during one of history's most turbulent periods. From its challenging development through World War II to its vital role in the early Cold War, it remains a fascinating chapter in aviation history. Hopefully, this journey through its story gives you a newfound appreciation for this unsung hero of the skies. Until next time, keep your eyes on the horizon and your heart in the clouds.